This is MJ. I'm an author, I'm an artist, I'm an analyzer. You can find all my work at mjmunoz.com. I happen to have a car full of kids right now. Hopefully they won't be too noisy, but we'll see what happens. Uh, I am here, or this is a writer tears. I'm here to talk about the Kamen Rider manga part two of six, which means I'll come back at least four more times to talk about the rest of this manga. And I gotta say, this manga was delight, or this chapter, this second chapter, was an absolute delight to read. Uh, it was a lot of fun. There was so much good, uh, like, emotional dynamics, and that's not only personal stuff between, like, Hongo and Tachibana uh, and Ruriko, and then, like, also something with her friend, but then also the evil of Shocker and their desire to control mankind's minds is revealed in a more profound way through Manbat and his virus. Uh, and then also the desperate fight that Hongo has with Manbat. Oh, and by the way, Man Spider who comes back and begs to be, uh, oh man, he begs to be given a second chance by Shocker's leader and he gets four new arms somehow, I guess. I mean, if they gave him four additional arms, wait, two, yeah, two additional arms. Anyway, he has four arms total plus two legs for six. So he's not a full, you know, fully representative spider guy, but whatever. Um, but he gets two more. So he has a total of four arms and he tries to kill Hongo. And when he fails, he, I don't know, takes a cyanide capsule. He poisons himself. I don't know what he does, but he does something and then he falls dead and then melts away as shocker, uh, cyborg are meant to do or want to do. And that's too bad for him. Anyway, before Man Spider dies, we get to see him swinging on his web, which is really weird looking. And I was going to say Eldritch. I feel like I'm going to use that too much talking about this manga, but I'm just going to say it. It's Eldritch. It's, it's really weird and, uh, yeah, it's funky looking, but pretty cool too. So anyway, so that happens and Man Bat ends up uh, coming along and taking Hongo out of the fight and... It's funny, one of the things that he does is he flies them up real high and he drops them, and Hongo gains all his power because his turbine turns the wind power into power for his body, and he's able to uh, counter Manbat in a very significant way. So that was cool. But then, of course, the plot gets a little crazier, and Manbat basically has all these people he's controlling in Ruriko's friend's building? Yeah, because... Like I said, there was a, a moment or an emotional thing with Ruriko's friend. Can't remember her name. Glasses Girl. Just call her that because she had glasses and they got broken. And Well, anyway, there's a really interesting cinematic shot where her glasses fall to the ground and one of the lenses breaks and the other one captures uh, her becoming infected by Man Bat biting her. And it's pretty grisly, um, but very cool, you know, in that horror type of way. And then she goes and tries to attack. No, she does effectively. No, they save her. Well, let's pass them up some more. Anyway, so Tobe ends up saving Ruriko at that time in Hongo's mansion or in the, in the yeah, I guess in Hongo's mansion. If you pause to think about it, it's really sad because Ruriko loses her father first and then her friend dies and it seemed like she was her best friend and, you know, this woman that she wanted to confide in after the death of her father and she's having to stay in the house of the man she believes murdered her father too. So it's a very emotionally fraught situation. And uh, anyway, I think that's cool. That's, that's very good drama, very intense. And I love, uh, you know, there's a little bit of the emotional stuff. And oh, uh, later on, so the, the man bats virus can control people with ultrasonic waves. And he tries to control Hongo. It's a little unclear. Uh, it seems as if Hongo maybe injected himself with the serum to dole or uh, mitigate the harm done by man, man bats virus so he's able like he basically fakes that he's being controlled and he's not and it enables him to injure man bats wing which ultimately is the thing it's like the keystone that brings him to victory over man bat because otherwise he wouldn't have been able to beat him at least not as quickly and easily as he did here so I mean, and it was still a, a desperate fight but i mean it would have been way more difficult had he not you know stabbed through his wing so that was pretty cool um, there's an emotional beat, though, where Hongo ends up in Ruriko's friend's apartment, I believe, trying to save her. It's really sweet in a, you know, odd kind of way, because Hongo is 
desperate to get away from the people who are being controlled by man bat because he will kill them if he has to but he doesn't want to because they are innocent bystanders and later some guy shoots him with i don't know if it was a rifle or a shotgun it was a little unclear it was dark it was night i couldn't tell anyway um he uh cracks the guy gives him like a rider chop to the clavicle and the guy collapses and it looks like he's uh he, by his face you can tell he's controlled by the virus and it kind of looks like he starts to turn into foam but it's not shown at that point uh but he's very ginger he's as ginger as he can be with all of the controlled people because uh it seems like he calls it a side effect that they'll melt like the other shocker you know kaijin type people if he's too rough with them while he's trying to evade them and it's i, I don't know if i said it specifically but he says something along the lines of like i don't want to hurt you please stay away from me and they're controlled so they can't understand that and they keep coming after him uh, and then interestingly enough, when he learns that the, the cure for the virus is in man bats, man bats, like thumb talons or whatever on his wings, uh, first of all, he rips off his wings in one of the most awesome, crazy, uh, things I've ever seen, uh, in a manga, you know, it reminded me of Guyver with like the hyper violence, right? I mean, cause he, he anyway, what's great about it is the way it's laid out on one page, he's grabbing it, uh, writers jumping up and grabbing his wings. And as you turn the page, you get the reveal of the wings being torn off and there's, you know, a little spray of, spray of blood and uh, Man Bat is not happy. And then he lays on the floor. And this is like really what gets me about Hongo. Man Bat's lying there on the floor and he says something along the lines of, I know you're a victim of shocker too. And I pity you for that, but you are too dangerous to be left alive. And then because, of course, Ishinomori put them in a graveyard for this fight, he grabs a cross and impales him through the gut or the heart. I'm not sure. It's like a, it looks like a metal cross for some reason, even though it should be like stone. But anyway, he stabs him with this thing and like, that is the end of that chapter or that. Yeah, yeah. It's the end of chapter two and it's amazing. And I think the... I, I want to pick, as I'm going through reading manga, I want to pick a favorite, uh, like, emotional panel that captures something, well, emotional about the story. Emotional slash story panel. And I want to pick an art panel. And I got to say, if I had to pick one panel, it's the panel where he's ripping off the wings. If I could pick two panels or pages, really, it would be the setup where he's, you can see the energy, the momentum, the posture as he's grabbing onto the wings. And as you make that turn, it's just, it's incredible. It's, it, the guy had a, Ishinomori had an amazing cinematic eye and uh, it just looked looked fabulous so it's as horrible as that might sound um, but then uh, the emotional panel is definitely him telling all those people as he's leaping away from them dramatically that he doesn't want to kill them or hurt them so that was fabulous anyway the manga continues to be great and uh, there were no crazy jumps in logic like in the last chapter and to clarify, in chapter one, there was this weird thing that happened at the docks when Ryder, when Kamen Rider and Midorikawa escaped Professor Midorikawa, and it didn't make any sense because it just stopped showing stuff happening, and, and then they were somewhere else, and it was like a new scene entirely, there was no transition, no anything like that. Yeah, I know, it's a big truck, cool, right? And uh, that was weird, but this one, it was perfect. Ironically, it was a longer chapter, but it was way, and I know it took, you know, probably the same amount of, you know, eight pages a week or whatever to publish and it, it was just it ran for longer weeks till the chapter was over come on this way but it was it was fabulous it was like a masterpiece like oops are you okay come on get up let me help you if he'd started with that man bat chapter as the first one that would have been better and it could have been really cool ah oh, you tough guy come on so I don't think I'll be doing another recording like that because it was a little bit of a disaster and I hope it wasn't a uh, too difficult experience for you. Let's see how well my uh, noise cancellation uh, aspect of my editing software works to mitigate some of the yelling and stuff from the kids. Uh, you're 10 minutes from home and they have to complain as you're taking dinner home. It's unbelievable. Anyway, um, or maybe it's very believable. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, I liked that manga. Or that chapter of the manga, I thought it was fabulous. There was so much good in it. Um, one thing that confused me at first, and then as I thought about it more and more, it made sense. And it wasn't actually I kept meditating on it or anything like that. It just came to me. There were two figures who carried a coffin into the Hongo mansion. And I'm pretty sure it was Tachibana and Midorikawa. And I don't remember who was in the coffin. Was it Manbat? That would sort of make sense. But also, 
I don't remember seeing her actually come out of the coffin there, but uh, I did read it like a couple days ago, most of it. I, I finished like the last 20 or so pages today, and the rest of it I read a couple days ago. So anyway, um, but like it was fast paced. Uh, it was longer, but it felt like it took less to read than the other one. And you know, there was a lot more action. Like I said, it was very cinematog cinematographic. It just like flowed visually, and it was very well composed and very exciting. And uh, there's a lot of great shots in there. So anyway, I told you what my favorite story panel or page is. Really, it's it's going to be page. Uh, and I also um, showed, showed you or told you um, what my favorite visual page was and i'll have those in the uh you can find the link to the full show notes in the show notes on your pod feeder which will take you over to mjmunoz.com and you can see uh the the images there i'll post them there i don't know if i'll stamp them with like you know story and art or art on one and then story on the other or, or what i'll do but i will post those up there um it's for you to see them so you can see exactly what i'm talking about and if you're reading this, if you have read it, if you you know remember anything from it in particular that you want to share, like what your favorite story uh, panel or page was, or your favorite art page, uh, I'd love to hear from you. You know, from this chapter specifically, what did you love in uh, the Kamen Rider manga, chapter two, the Flying Man Bat? Uh, I'd be very curious to hear that. So anyway, without uh, much more delay, I'm going to go ahead and let you go. I thank you for your time and attention and. Until next time, be well. This is MJ, signing out. I hope you enjoyed that. Go to mjmunoz.com to leave any questions, comments, or other feedback you might have. There you can find all of my analysis, art, and fiction. I cover books, tokusatsu, comic books, anime, and more. Look around. You're sure to find something else that you'll enjoy as well. This has been a Story Over Everything production.